You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's Wife, The Markles, Part 1 A little while ago, Australian Channel, Channel 7, showcased the interview that took place with the Markles, namely Thomas Markle Sr., Thomas Markle Jr., and Samantha Markle, also known by those members of her family as Vonnie. This, of course, had been vaunted in the press previously, and... Numerous people, of course, want to know what was said. Was this an opportunity for them to land some blows on Harry's wife after the way that she had behaved? Or did it take an alternative course? Also, it's important to see how this all fits into the narcissistic dynamic, which is the purpose of this channel. I've watched it, and I'm going to take you through what was said, what was shown, for the purpose of letting you know what happened, but also to interpret that through the prism of narcissism. Thomas Markle Sr. appears, and it's very clear that his health has suffered as a consequence of the stroke that he experienced. He has difficulty walking. He has to walk with a cane, with a walking stick. And his speech is impacted to the extent that at times it's a little bit difficult to discern what he's actually saying and repeatedly subtitles are used on the screen to ensure clarity of what he's stating. He emphasises very clearly, but we already knew this, that Harry's wife spent her childhood with him. This, of course, is demonstrative of the facade that he operates as a narcissist, that he was the kind and doting father. Now remember... He asserted control over her by essentially letting her do what she wanted, by enabling her to be the princess that, in her deluded mind, she believes that she is. He facilitated that, overcompensating, in effect, for the absence of his mo- of her mother, Doria. It's clear in what he states that he wants to make it clear that he gave her so much, and understandably whether he was a narcissist or not, would feel hard done by in respect of the way that she has now treated him. He wants to demonstrate very clearly that he did everything that he could for her in her childhood, that he supported her, that he paid for things, that he took her to different places, and he's now had all of that thrown in his face. Were Thomas Markle Sr. not a narcissist, that would hurt treating somebody in such a way only for them to have nothing to do with you. But in a sense, it's doubly painful for him as a narcissist because it threatens his deep-seated need for control. And the fact that she has treated him in such a way really does sting. And therefore, his way of retaliating and nullifying the threat to control, of course, he can't contact her because he had no means of doing so. And instead, that is why he's repeatedly, rather than keeping these matters private, has gone running to the press. Now, I know that there are some of you who think to yourself, well, quite right, so he should, to expose what a horrible person she is. I'd have done the same. Well, not everybody would have done, and not every narcissist would necessarily respond in such a way. But he does because it allows him to indirectly assert control over her. We then get to see some video footage which shows her playing in the snow, saying thank you for the birthday, showing her tap dancing, showing her as the homecoming queen, playing baseball, all things that Thomas Markle Sr. helped facilitate. He explained that they were close throughout their lives, that from the sixth grade onwards she lived with him, and he got her through high school and college once again. All of this is part of his own facade management, utilising, of course, the truth, as I've explained to to you, Virtue. By virtue of my video, the truth, the half-truth, and nowhere but the truth, the narcissist will use the truth as you understand it to be to get to the prime aims. And that's what's happening here. Mr. Markle expresses the view that he wishes that we could sit down and talk and work out our differences. I was her hero, and then she threw me out. She does out a pity play, and also demonstrates how unkind and uncaring she has behaved. Tom Markle Jr. chips in by saying she has to ask herself, why is she treating him like this? Because if it wasn't for my father, she wouldn't be where she is. 
One thing is clear throughout this, that Thomas Markle Jr. really doesn't understand what his sister is. He keeps wondering, surely she must see who she is. Surely she must recognise that what she's doing is wrong, that our dad did so much for her and she's just thrown it back in his face. When is she going to wake up from this? He doesn't realise that as a narcissist, she views this as perfectly acceptable behaviour because, from her worldview, she is the victim. We then cut to Samantha Markle, who makes the interesting observation that at the outset, Harry's wife didn't say, Daddy, I met a great man and he's really interesting. Her immediate response was to say, Daddy, I met a prince. This, of course, is demonstrative of the way that Harry's wife sees Harry purely in terms of status, and her comment there gave her away. What's also evident throughout the course of this interview is that Thomas Markle Sr. is very much focused on some kind of reconciliation, that he wants to get everything sorted out before he dies. Tom Markle Jr. just can't understand why she's behaved in the way that she has after everything that has been done for her. But of the three, it is Samantha Markle who sees through the behaviour more clearly, recognises not necessarily that she's a narcissist, but certainly recognises the lies, the inconsistencies, the way that she has behaved. She, out of the three, is far less forgiving of the way that Harry's wife has behaved. Tom Sr. and Tom Jr. travel across the country to Tampa to meet with Samantha because she has MS. And there's an emotional reunion which shows Samantha crying when she meets up with her father and her half-brother because the two of them now live in Mexico. Tom Sr. then invites the question, querying, is it not worth seeing me? And the fact is that she has denied him seeing his grandchildren that he's never met. And she, he says quite firmly, I refuse to be buried by her. Tom Jr., again, not really grasping what she is, states that someday Harry's wife has to realise that she's missing out on a tight-knit family. The interviewer states, you'd think that given Harry's background and what's happened to him, you think he'd realise the importance of family. Thomas Senior responds by explaining, you think so, but Harry is still a boy. Of course, he's partially correct in that, but what he doesn't recognise is that Harry's not very bright, and also he fails to realise that Harry's very much in the grip of a narcissist who doesn't allow him to see what is actually going on. He also fails to appreciate that a narcissist such as Harry's wife will be smearing them to Harry, undoubtedly saying some very unpleasant and nasty things about her father and, with regard to her half-siblings, to turn Harry against them so he doesn't question the fact that he's never met them. The interviewer explains that as soon as Charles walked her down the aisle, she basically wrote her family off. Sam agrees with that, stating that when she watched the royal wedding, there was something missing in the eyes of both Harry and Harry's wife. The interviewer points out that she wasn't invited and that George Clooney had a spot at the wedding, and Sam said yes, and he came out afterward and said he didn't really know them. Tom Sr. again emphasises that he spent a lot of time with his daughter, and he doesn't understand why she's going to throw all of this away. He doesn't, of course, understand what she is. Tom Senior explains that she must know that he's had a stroke because it's been reported on so much and that it's actually been four years since he's had any contact from her, underlining the fact that he's been disengaged from. He posits if she doesn't turn up for a stroke, if that doesn't move her, what would? Again, demonstrating that he doesn't realise what she is, that she has no emotional empathy, that she doesn't care about her family because it's all about her, that she clearly has put them to one side because she deems them as not good enough, treacherous, tr uh, traitors, that she doesn't want anything to do with. Tom Senior, I beg your pardon, Tom Junior, states that it seems as if she just woke up one day and decided that she doesn't have any family anymore. Sam goes further than that and explains that she had a clear motive for writing them off. She sees the behaviour as more deliberate than it's viewed by the two Toms. The opening of all of this 
sets a scene whereby it's clear that her father doesn't understand why she's treated him like this, is very hurt as a consequence of the fact that he's done so much for her and she's just thrown it in his face, that furthermore, her brother doesn't understand why she's behaved like this and thinks that it's outrageous. But again, he doesn't actually see what she is. Of the three of them, Sam has a closer understanding of the nastiness that goes with Harry's wife and the more malicious behaviours that are under the surface. She is also more forthright in her damnation with regard to her half-sister. Join me in part two for further analysis of the Markle interview.